Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to number 25 in our IC7300 From A to Z series. This time, we're going to take a look at adjusting the USB transmit audio levels with a couple of popular digital mode programs. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. Before we get started with adjusting any transmit audio levels, I'm going to be connecting this up to the back of my rig. This is a 25 watt dummy load. I picked this up a few weeks ago at a local ham fest. A dummy load of some sort is a good thing to have in your shack. Uh, 25 watts is going to be plenty because I'm going to turn the power on this all the way down and uh, it shouldn't be putting out more than a couple of watts. But uh, if you want to do any tuning with amplifiers or checking power output on your rig, you're going to need to get something a little bigger. But this should do us for now. All right, first we're going to look at setting the transmit level audio on the rig. And unfortunately, this is a little bit more complicated than it really needs to be. The reason for that is there's three different places that you can adjust the levels and you really only need one place so whichever you change on any of the settings will affect the other settings so let me show you my technique and uh, there are I'm sure other techniques but this is how I go about it first um, let's take a look and I by the way you're gonna be listening to the audio through the speakers tonight not uh, through my mixer port because I've got a few too many audio connections going on here right now so I'm going to just take a quick double check and make sure that I have the rig set up correctly. So we're going to go to settings and connectors that we reviewed last time. And I have data modulation set to USB. So it's going to come in through the USB cable. And I have my USB modulation level set to 50%. This is the first place that you can adjust it. I'm going to leave it at 50% and I tend to just leave it at 50% on the rig and then I set all of my different PC settings and software so that it's correct with the rig at 50%. So that eliminates at least one of the three that needs to be fooled with. So we'll get back out and we're going to be doing the settings tonight on FL Digi. So in FL Digi, if I come down here and you look at the lower part of the screen, you see this minus 3.0. That is the default setting. This is the transmit audio level. And you've got some arrows on both sides here. And if I hit the double arrows, it increases or decreases the audio level 1 dB at a time. And the uh, single arrow does it by one-tenth of a dB at a time. And then the third place that you can set the audio level is with the actual sound settings on the PC. And I've opened up the sound settings. This is Windows 10, of course, so if you're using either an older version of Windows or if you're using Linux or if you're using uh, Mac, this is going to be slightly different, but the concepts are pretty much the same. So in Windows, I'm going to go down here to Sound Control Panel. And when I open the Sound Control Panel, the 2-USB audio codec, I happen to know, is my rig, the way things are plugged in right now. And if I, and I'm on the Playback tab, so I double-click on that, and we're on Speakers. And if I go to Levels, this is the third place I can change this level. So let's get into tune mode here, and I'm going to leave this all up and just bring FL Digi back to the front. So on FL Digi and most digital software programs, there is a, a tune function somewhere that allows you to key the rig. And also on the rig, I have the rig set in uh, center mode right now, and I've got the span at 2.5 kilohertz, so we should see the audio on here when we're in transmit because I have the scope enabled for transmit. So let's click on tune and then there you see the tone on the scope and you could hear the tone and with FL Digi at the default level of minus three let me go back to the speaker settings here 
And I'm going to increase the speaker setting. And let me just turn the audio down a little so that's not too annoying to you listening to it. As I bring the audio up to 100%, it uh, it gets a little bit louder here, but it's not too bad. I'm going to see if I can overdo it. Although, and, you, and if you look, you'll see the ALC came up. That's the other point. I have the ALC on on the screen. But if I continue to bring this up in FL Digi now, that's all the way up to zero. I'm actually not seeing any distortion shown on here, but my ALC level is way up. Now, if you read the manual for the ICOM, it tells you to set your audio levels so that the ALC indicator is between 30 and 50 percent. That's for voice. You really don't want to do that for digital audio because the when you're in digital modes, the audio level is going to be consistent. And let me turn off the tune here for just a minute, just so we don't have to listen to that noise. Um, when you are setting up for digital modes, and the FL Digi manual tells you this, and I believe most of the digital programs have similar advice, you really want to set the level so that your ALC is basically just barely begins to show some movement and then back it off. Because ALC is automatic limiter control. So if the rig is starting to limit, it means that your level is already at an overdriving point. The reason that you set it up a little bit on voice is because your voice level changes as you're speaking and you want the peaks to be bringing it up to maybe 30 to 50 percent. At least that's what the 7300 manual recommends. But for digital audio, we want to get it so that it's just barely indicating. So let's turn tune back on and see if we can do that. Now, right now, my ALC is way up there, so I'm going to bring the Windows audio settings up first. And I'm going to try going to 50% here. Or well, 51, that's close enough. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the controls in FL Digi to bring the audio level down. And you'll see the ALC is coming down now as I lower this. And there we go so if I go down one more now I have no ALC indication at all so I'm going to set this at minus 11 and I've just barely got uh, an ALC indication so let's try that there and then let's take a look at one other program we're going to take a look at um, WSJT and we'll see how that software works. Brief pause while I shut down FL Rig because it's screwing up WSJT. Let's try this again. Okay, so now we've got WSJT up. And in WSJT, you'll notice there's a tune control here. And there is a power setting, they call it in WSJT. And you'll notice if I hover over it, it says adjust the transmit audio level. So let's put WSJT into tune. And if we look at the ALC, you'll see that my ALC is up at about 30% or so, or just up to the three there. So if I lower this down, down to minus 4.7 it's a little bit lower than uh, or the audio output so there it's just barely showing at minus 3 dB let's try this is a little touchy to do with the mouse so we'll try it right there and we're at uh, about minus 3.4 dB so now we have the WSJT and the FL Digi audio output adjusted now, uh, let me go back to FL Digi here. So here we are back in FL Digi. And one other thing that I'm going to 
show you is a little hint that has caused me grief a couple of times. You'll notice that there is the waterfall display here going, and I'm going to turn the rig audio up here. Now, we're in a dummy load, so there's virtually no signals here. Uh, not virtually, there's no signals here. But there's still, you know, the background noise level that uh, the noise floor for the rig itself, and you see that on the waterfall as the uh, dark blue going down. One of the things that I've had happen to me is I have turned the rig on and I thought I had everything plugged in and set up right and tuned to some stations, uh, you know, PSK or whatever, RIDI, whatever mode I happen to be trying to work. And I would actually see everything on the waterfall on FL Digi, but it just wouldn't decode very well. It would be kind of sloppy. There'd be a lot of noise, even though the signal sounded like a really good signal. And I couldn't figure out what was going on until I finally, um, I don't know, there was some loud room noise or whatever. And I noticed the room noise affected the waterfall. And I realized what was happening is that FL Digi was actually set up so that it was using the internal mic on the radio. And I'll show you that in the configure screen here. If you go to configure sound card, capture uh, is the microphone input. Um, and I have it set to the, you know, the USB audio codec. So this is the speaker coming out of the radio which is the microphone coming into the computer. And, of course, one of the choices here is actually the microphone that's built into my laptop. And it had somehow gotten set to that because the USB wasn't connecting or for whatever reason. But it looked that way on the um, waterfall. And in the last episode, I showed you that you could change the USB audio output so that the squelch would squelch the USB output. So what I do is I'm going to turn up the squelch here. And you notice that the waterfall on the screen now just went completely black. And even though I'm talking, I know that the microphone on the laptop is not what's picking up the audio. So I use the squelch control to actually make sure that I'm connected correctly and that my input to the whatever program I'm using is actually coming through the USB port or whatever port I'm using. So just another hint in case you're having trouble decoding sometime. So that's really it for setting the audio level and then if you notice I kind of intentionally put the audio speaker outputs on the computer to 50 or pretty close to 50 percent and I have the rig audio set to 50 percent and then I've adjusted my two software programs. And again, if you're using something other than FL Digi, if you're using Ham Radio Deluxe or, you know, MMS, M, M, MSS TV or, um, you know, Multi PSK, any one of a multitude of other programs out there, they're all going to have some sort of similar tune and audio output setting that you can adjust. So... Hopefully this gets you to set your audio correctly. Next we'll take a look at the audio input. At the beginning of this series, I promised to keep each one of these segments to about 10 or 15 minutes, and that time seems to just fly by on some of these. That's all we're going to cover this time. Next time we'll take a look at receive audio settings, and then we'll look at serial port settings, and then we'll actually try to make a couple of digital contacts and see how it goes. If you're enjoying these videos, you can subscribe by clicking on the little button that shows up on the lower right toward the end of the video, and I appreciate any likes that you might want to give. Thanks for watching. This is Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.